We've got some mortgage rate drama that we need to talk about, a headline that you may not have realized. We could be in for a wild ride. And also, I want to know, can supply actually crash the housing market in Nashville? We've had a buildup of supply for years. If we get another year of supply growth, could prices tank? I'm going to tell you what I think. I'm actually got a forecast for 2025 inventory. But first, let's go back into this mortgage rate drama headline that I was just referring to. And it's this headline right here. Trump-backed GOP funding plan fails in-house as shutdown nears. Now, one of the things that Trump had asked for that he did not get, which by the way, he's 0 for 2 now for pushing the Congress very publicly for certain things that he did not get, And that's kind of one of the reasons I'm getting a little bit nervous about what's going to happen here. But one of the things he asked for, he said, Trump insisted Republican leaders add a provision waiving or raising the federal debt limit before he takes office. He does not want to inherit a massive problem with the debt ceiling. He wants to be able to get in there, get some time. And I just don't think it's going to happen. This failed, by the way. This failed. They did end up passing something, but they had to drop the federal debt limit, and lo and behold, Janet Yellen comes out yesterday and says, hey, everybody, our debt limit could actually be hit by mid-January, which means that literally Trump, before he's sworn into office, they could be limiting spending, whatever the extraordinary measures is they do. I mean, he's going to be sworn in, and they're going to be fully combating Congress on how to cut spending and how to address spending. It's going to get bad. And the problem with this is, is this directly affects mortgage rates. So this is kind of a problem. Trump inherited it. They don't have a debt ceiling increase and Congress is going to not agree on anything. And that uncertainty could create major volatility in the 10-year long duration bonds. I could see them skyrocketing. I could see them tanking. We just don't know where they go. But my personal opinion, risk is to the upside. Do not plan on buying a house planning to refinance when mortgage rates drop. We just have no idea what's coming next. Now, what does this have to do with mortgage rates? Well, as you know, there is a connection to mortgage rates to the the 10-year borrowing cost of our federal government. And if you look in the past few months since September, middle September, it has been going up. And with it, we have seen a very rapid increase in mortgage rates Interestingly enough, this year-over-year change has become one of the most important metrics I am watching in 2025. And the reason is, here's a a view from Fred that's year-over-year. You can see we spent a good part, the second half of 2024, where mortgage rates were actually lower than the year before. And that's where we saw that massive increase. I should say massive. I mean, it was double digits. It's not massive compared to what we were doing before, but a strong increase in contract volume demand. And here I posted on it on LinkedIn. You can see uh, contract volume now negative. The first time since August that we've been negative year over year in contract volume. And of course it comes right as mortgage rates go year over year positive. The correlation here is just astonishingly clear. So if mortgage rates are higher than they were the year before, we're going to see lower demand. If they are lower than they were the year before, we're going to see higher demand. And obviously, the lower they get. We really noticed in September that that really, really stoked demand when it got right there on September 11th. That's when demand really shifted into gear. But it hasn't changed up until mortgage rates went year over year positive and then it went negative. Pretty wild correlation there. Nonetheless, we have a mortgage rate risk to start off the year, which makes me think that inventory is going to build because contract volume is negative going into January. And so we have a January, February close volume that's probably going to be lower than last year. Obviously, these are some of the slowest months of the year, so it's not that big of a deal. But it raises the question, is inventory going to build? Now, here is Greater Nashville active inventory. Interestingly enough, when we compare 12 month closed volume to the current active listings in each month, We can see that we actually had, this is wild, this is wild. In February of 2022, we had a 0.4 month supply of inventory. This is like a week and a half supply of inventory in February of 2022. 
By May, it had gone up to 0.75. So now we're at three weeks of inventory, which by the way is double the inventory, which is pretty crazy in itself. But what's interesting about this is May 2022 was the month that prices peaked in Nashville. With less than one month of inventory, prices peaked and began their descent from 500,000 for a median sales price all the way down to 450 where it would be just 8 short months later a massive 10% drop in prices what's wild about this the single family median price was 500,000 now we have over 3 months supply of inventory and the median price is still right around 500,000. This just has me scratching my head. You know, because everybody says, oh, more inventory, we'll get price drops. Well, clearly that's not the case. Clearly that's not the case. It wasn't the case since 2022 when we had three weeks supply. Now we have more. I would have said with more inventory comes more price drops. That's not happening. There's no distress that's pushing the market down in aggregate, okay? There is some distress out there. I'm not trying to dismiss it. And there's some neighborhoods. I mean, you saw the new bill neighborhoods. There's some neighborhoods that are dropping in price. But in aggregate, prices, median price, if you lined up everybody buying, they're not spending less on their housing. And so it just has me scratching my head. Now, when I look at Davidson County, which I think is the worst of the bunch, here you can see we, again, exploded. And then we've been growing about one full month supply of inventory every year. We went from two to three. Now we're at four, grew a little faster this year. And what's interesting about that is when we contrast that with Williamson County, see Williamson County grew faster in 22, but then it kind of stabilized and we're really no higher now than we were uh, a year ago, maybe a little bit higher. And you can see the trajectory has changed a lot between these two counties. And now I'm waving yellow flags in Davidson County. Why am I waving yellow flags? Why am I saying, oh man, Davidson County is a powder keg? I mean, it's only four months supply. Six months traditionally has been a buyer's market, why would I think that Davidson County was at risk? It really comes down to this chart right here. This is the ratio of active listings to contract volume in Davidson County, which by the way, let me just show you a map of Davidson County real quick. So this is a map of Tennessee. Here, look, I'll zoom out. Here's a map of Tennessee. Davidson County right in the middle. It's the dark green here. So when we look at Tennessee, which by the way, I shifted to Redfin data, even though I think it overstates active listings, it does a good job of capturing trend. So we're using Redfin data here. This is a comparison of, of November 2022 to November 2024. Redfin is showing Williamson only gained six active listings from November 22 to November 24, whereas Davidson gained 800 active listings which I think the number's right. I just think that their total aggregate active listings are a little bit high, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, the growth is happening in Davidson County. Davidson County's Nashville's urban core right here, just south. This is Franklin. You've got Murfreesboro over here in Rutherford County. You've got Lebanon and Mount Juliet in Wilson County. You've got Gallatin in Hendersonville and Sumner County. Those are kind of your big areas. You've got Columbia down here in Murray County. So anyways, all that to say, Davidson County is clearly winning on the growth race. Take a look at this chart right here. This is the ratio of active listings to contract volume, okay? So we take a 31-day contract volume. It's a snapshot in time. It's like what it feels like versus what the actual inventory is. And you can see what it feels like. Remember, inventory is about four months supply, but it feels like almost five and a half months supply right now, which is higher than where it was last December and where it was in 2022, two years ago. We can see a dramatic increase in the supply ratio, the active to contract volume in Davidson County. Now let's contrast this with what's going on in Williamson County. Williamson County, you can see our, our, our supply ratio active over contract is lower than where it was two years ago. It's lower than where it was last year. We are in a tighter market in Williamson County. So people looking in Brentwood and Franklin and even out towards Nolensville, they send me houses and they say, oh, I bet we could lowball them. Um, it, it's a lot tighter here. It's tighter than it was last year and the year before. It is not nearly as easy to be aggressive on prices in Williamson County 
and in some of those nicer areas. And believe me, the nice houses are the ones everybody wants. If you want to lowball someone, it has to be something that's been sitting on the market, cutting their price. The lot's not as attractive. The, the house maybe needs some work. Those are the ones you can lowball. You cannot lowball in this market a nice, well-kept house on a good lot in a good location. You can't lowball. There's so much demand for it. Unless you're asking like you're in the 6 million range and then there's a couple that are just sitting out there. But Davidson County, I said last week, feels like a powder keg and it really does. But let me show you, here's my neighborhood tracker. Let me just show you, I, I switched the coloring to show active to contract instead of, instead of inventory. And what you see is you see a lot darker shades. You see darker red and you see darker green. And these darker greens, a perfect example is Charlotte Park. Okay, Charlotte Park, we can see 207 houses closed in the last 12 months in Charlotte Park. There's a lot of new builds in there. There's a lot of action in there. There are 47 active listings. This actually creates a 2.7 month supply of inventory if you compare it to what closed in the past 12 months. However, if you compare it to contract volume, we have almost a 12 month supply of inventory. 12 month supply of inventory. So what feels like a full year supply of inventory, really in reality, there's only about a two and a half month supply, under three month supply of inventory there. This is why you can be aggressive on prices. You can be aggressive on offers in a place that feels like it has a 12 month supply of inventory. Nothing's moving. There's only four under contract. There's 47 active listings. Sellers that have cut their price, they're looking around and they're saying there's a lot of competition and nothing's moving here. This is where you can be aggressive on price. Okay, let me contrast that with, let's do Water's Edge. Water's Edge had a lot of new builds in there last year. 77, okay, so here's a good one. 77 closed volume, 10 active listings with seven under contract. 10 active listings and you've got seven under contract. That's a much tighter supply. And look at the inventory. There's only a 1.6 month supply of inventory. These neighborhoods were terrible last year. Actually, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. So we can see, we actually had a lot of inventory in August. We had 28 in August. Now we're down to 10. So inventory has dropped rapidly. Demand has been relatively stable in this neighborhood. You can see last summer they had 19. Now I do know a lot of these have been new builds. A lot of these have been new builds. I don't know that they have a ton of new builds left. There was a few lots that they had left in Water's Edge. It's just, a, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. So interesting, look, look at that, look at that. You got a, a low there, 240 a foot. So it does look like prices are stopped, which brings me to the next question. If Davidson County topples on price, does it drag Middle Tennessee with it? I, I'd, I'd love to know what you think. My, my personal opinion is yes, but I'm still not sure that Davidson will just topple over on price. I'm, I'm not sure. This has me feeling very bearish about Davidson County. I mean, how many... How, how much further can this go? We're at 5.3. Will it be six next year? Will it be six by the late summer of next year? Keep in mind, we're about to go into a season where everything gets tighter. In January, contracts start increasing pretty rapidly. Demand will be up and this will drop. Now, mortgage rates are higher than they were last year. We've got a lot of tension in the federal government. So does that mean that Demand's going to be lower. I do think it will be lower than it was last January, but I still expect it to shoot up. So it's going to be interesting to watch. You see here, it drops here too. Supply will tighten as soon as January hits. As soon as January hits, buyers start coming out. They start moving. They start buying. I've had so many conversations with people saying, I'm waiting until after the new year. Of course you are. Everybody else is. And, and that's fine. I'm not, not criticizing. I'm just saying there's going to be a lot of people that come out of the woodwork, decide they start buying. They all start buying together. The stuff starts going under contract and the season starts. By the way, here's my forecast. Five months supply. That's what I think we'll have in 2025. Five months supply in Davidson County. For everywhere else, it'll average to about 4.2 months supply. But again, is that enough? I mean, most people say six months supply. That's where your buyer's market is. So with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Happy New Year.